Topping today's news, former FDX CEO Sam Bankman fried arrested on Monday and appeared in court today. The Bahamas Securities Commission defending its actions following FDX collapse. The official opposition continues to call for the resignation of the Minister of Works, and we will hear what the minister responsible has to say about the new natural resources bill. Bahamas, I'm Jorino Saunders. This is your JCN Evening News. It's a pleasure to have you join us. In what seemed like a roller coaster ride in a nearly six hour long proceeding at the Magistrates Court today, former CEO and co founder of Collapse Cryptocurrency Exchange FTX Digital Markets, Sam Bankman Fried, faced Chief Magistrate Joanne Ferguson Pratt. Once dubbed the king of cryptocurrency, the embattled Bankman Fried, under heavy police guard, was escorted through the back entrance of the court, away from the view of the public and the media, which is unprecedented. As court proceedings began on Bankman Freed's provisional warrant for extradition, it was adjourned for a short time, as his attorneys had noted that they had not spoken with him or received any instructions on how to proceed since his arrest on Monday evening. The chief magistrate cleared the courtroom for a brief time for Sam Bankman Freed to meet with his attorneys. Once court reconvened, Bankman Freed, who is facing eight criminal charges in the U.S., including wire fraud and violation of campaign finance laws, told the chief magistrate that he is not waiving his right to an extradition trial. A good majority of the time was then spent on arguments on whether Chief Magistrate Joanne Ferguson Pratt had the jurisdiction to grant bail. Proceedings were adjourned yet again to return at 4.30 p.m. Once back in the courtroom, the Chief Magistrate denied Bankman Freed bail as he is considered a flight risk. Bankman Freed was remanded to the Bahamas Department of Corrections until February 8, 2023. When he returns, his extradition hearing will be heard before Magistrate Shaka Seville. Before leaving the Magistrate's Court this afternoon, Chief Magistrate Ferguson Pratt allowed Bankman Freed to hug family members and friends who were there to support him. Also present in court today were officials from the United States Embassy. In a statement from the Attorney General responding to Sam Bankman Freed's arrest, Prime Minister Philip Davis stated that the Bahamas and the United States have a shared interest in holding accountable all individuals associated with FTX who may have betrayed the public trust and broken the law. While the United States is pursuing criminal charges against Bankman Freed individually, the Bahamas will continue its own regulatory and criminal investigation into the collapse of FTX with the continued cooperation of law enforcement and regulatory partners in the United States and elsewhere. Following Bankman Freed's arrest, U.S. Congresswoman Maxine Waters said she was surprised to hear that he had been arrested as he was due to testify about the collapse of FTX before the U.S. Congress today. The U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC, has charged Sam Bankman Freed with orchestrating a scheme to defraud investors in the failed cryptocurrency exchange, FTX. The U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission is also charging Bankman Freed with violating the anti-fraud provisions of the Securities Act of 1933 and the Securities Exchange Act of 1934. The Securities Commission of the Bahamas yet again with the daunting task of setting the record straight when it comes to the fallout of FTX digital markets and what the company's U.S. debtors are putting out there in the public domain. This afternoon, the Commission addressed what they call misstatements in FTX U.S. bankruptcy case. Our Caitlin Babs has more on this angle in this next report. As the debacle of FTX digital markets continues to unfold, the Securities Commission is once again having the need to correct key misstatements made by new Chief Executive Officer of FTX, U.S. John Ray III, who also represents FTX U.S. debtors. As the row over rival bankruptcy proceedings deepen, the commission in a statement this afternoon says Mr. Ray does not appear to be concerned with facts, but rather appears intended only to make headlines and advance questionable agendas. Add to that, the commission has accused Mr. Ray of obstructing investigations into FTX. 
the commission making it clear that it was the first regulator in the world to take strong, decisive action to protect the customers and creditors of FTX, regardless of where they may be located, and every action taken by them was in strict accordance with the country's legislation and with orders made by the Bahamas' Supreme Court. These actions, the commission says, included securing the transfer of potentially co-mingled digital assets of FTX Digital Markets Limited and affiliates to a secure location under the authority of an order issued by the highest court. In early November, when the once second largest cryptocurrency exchange fell into financial crisis, the commission froze the assets of FTX and still holds those assets as trustee only under Bahamian law. The commission contends that Mr. Ray, in his filings in bankruptcy court, referred to redacted email correspondence by and between Sam Bankman-Fried and Bahamian officials. Those filings, according to the commission, were designed to create a false impression of communications between SBF and the commission. These redactions, the commission contends, are disturbing, as Mr. Ray is aware that the full email reveals SBF's acknowledgement that he had not briefed the Securities Commission. According to international online media coin Desk, a court filing made on Monday by FTX says that SBF and co-founder Gary Wang were in close and frequent contact with the commission and the attorney general throughout the week of the crypto company's collapse in early November. The filing by FTX also cites an email sent to Attorney General Ryan Pinder in which Bankman Freed said he would allow Bahamians to withdraw assets. The commission says it finds it disturbing that, either deliberately or through ignorance, Mr. Ray's filings and communications continue to wrongfully confuse as one, the actions of the government of the Bahamas, the Securities Commission of the Bahamas, and the court-appointed-slash-court-supervised joint provisional liquidators. The Securities Commission continues to conduct a comprehensive and diligent investigation into the causes of FTX's failure, working in cooperation with law enforcement and regulatory authorities, both in the Bahamas and other jurisdictions. Unfortunately, it has been necessary for the Securities Commission to make a request to Mr. Ray's representatives to not obstruct that investigation, Mr. Ray has not once reached out to the Securities Commission to discuss any of his concerns before airing them publicly. The Commission emphasizes that Mr. Ray, however, has been informed by letter dated December 7th. Mr. Ray has not responded to the Commission to date. For JCN News, I'm Caitlin Babb. Opposition leader Michael Pintard sounding off in the House of Assembly on Monday as he continues to lament statements by Works and Utilities Minister Alfred Sears regarding the Bahamas Power and Light Fuel Hedge as disingenuous and disrespectful. The Marco City Member of Parliament blasting comes after Minister Sears last Thursday admitted that he had indeed received emails regarding the hedging program for BPL after denying seeing correspondence from BPL executives. Mr. Pintard remained quiet until Monday when he took the opportunity to voice his opinion on the matter. It's disrespectful is for a member in this house more than eight times to claim not to know about a hedging program and you all being the, be on the desk, only to find out that it was untruthful. Uh, and even when a press conference is held, the press conference is littered with new untruths. My, I, my old iPad, my old iPad, I found the emails on as if, as if, as if, as if you can't go on a new device and find old emails. <laughs> The Minister of Works and Utilities told reporters last Thursday that he did a personal search after being questioned by the opposition and reaching out to his permanent secretary to no avail for confirmation on whether he did receive correspondence from BPL. He stated that only at that point did he find an email dating back to October 2021 containing attachments regarding the hedging program. The opposition leader also criticizing the Davis administration's responses to arguments made by the opposition, claiming that they intimidate the public. Members of the public, every time we raise these factual issues about issues of governance, multiple members on the governing side comes with threats. That's what they do. 
One member, one member said, are you sure you want to lay a legitimate document in the house? Because somebody can always come in here and lay a document and say you all receive a bribe. We now have the, the member for Yamakraw Yama threatening what they would release. We already see you all. We already see you all and how you all are behaving, seeking to intimidate behaviors. And so that's what you said. The opposition continues to stand on their request for the Minister of Works to resign, which was spoken loudly back in November due to what they deem as his failure to reduce the cost of electricity for the Bahamian public. And finally in this segment, Minister of Foreign Affairs and Chairman for the Progressive Liberal Party, Fred Mitchell, took time on Monday to defend fellow Cabinet Minister Alfred Sears as the official opposition continues to push for his resignation after he admitted to seeing correspondence from the Bahamas Power and Light executives regarding the corporation's fuel hedge when he had previously said in the House that he did not see those documents. Mr. Mitchell believes the opposition has no grounds to demand for Mr. Sears' resignation. Last week, there was a concerted push by Mr. Pintard, his colleagues, to get Mr. Sears to resign, they said, because he misled the House of Assembly on the question of the hedge to protect against future oil prices at BPL, left in place by the FNM administration. The only problem with their argument for resignation is that it's built on a false premise. Mr. Sears indicated that as soon as he recognized the error of his statement, he corrected it on the floor of the House. So where then was the misleading? Misleading requires malice. That means that you knew it was false and you deliberately told a falsehood. Not so in this case. So the whole Pintard F&M case collapsed on its face long before their demonstration in front of Mr. Sears' office. It was just showboating on their part. Mr. Mitchell then accused the two local dailies of doing the work of the opposition in the Sears BPL matter. He asked the following question and gave his opinion on the legitimacy of the BPL fuel hedge based on the F&M's assertions. What is all this stuff about the hedge anyway? The bottom line is this. After all the horse dead and cow fat, all the nonsense that the press and the FNM and all this stuff about BPL, the problem is BPL itself rejected the hedge left in place. And they believed it would have been negligible in its effects and so not worth the effort. Secondly, the financial secretary who guards the government's purse did not support the hedge, so BPL could not have used it anyway in the face of that opposition. But of course, the FNM and our intrepid press have one mantra, don't let the truth interfere with a good story. What we know is BPL made the right decision on the hedge. It was not worth the paper written on. All of these millions of dollars the FNM claimed would have been saved was a fantasy on their part. Opposition leader Michael Pintard has accused Mr. Sears and Prime Minister Philip Davis of trying to conceal the fact that they had made a bad decision by not continuing with the fuel hedge at BPL and in the process has subjected the country to an increase of fuel charges internationally. We'll take a break here. We'll be right back after these commercials. <laughs> 